Hello, Sunshine. I'm Alexi Lawson. Welcome to a very special edition of the State of the Union podcast. Uh, my friend David Mossy is here with me, and we are pleased to welcome and welcome back, all right, to the State of the Union uh, podcast, our friend, uh, my classmate, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, and let's be honest, one of the great American soccer players in history who recently retired, and she's off on uh, new adventures, and we'll talk about that a little bit with the great Carly Lloyd. Carly, welcome to the State of the Union podcast. I said welcome back, so you're always welcome here. Um, okay, let's get right into it. Um, uh, we are talking to you uh, about a, a week after the historic announcement of the, uh, the settlement uh, between the United States Soccer Federation and the U.S. women, a group of U.S. women. I think it's around 66 players, ultimately. $22 million going to the players. Another $2 million going to the players to be available post-career for uh, work or charity work that they are doing up to fifty percent or $50,000 that they can access. This is about one-third of what this group of players that you are among had sought. So um, happy days in a certain way are here again. Congratulations maybe are, are in order. But my, my, big, my big question to you is, after all the, the time and the effort and the resource and the money and the cost, and yes, I guess the damage along the way, um, when you wake up this morning and you see where this, uh, this, this situation is, by the way, I should say it is contingent on the U.S. Women's National Team signing a CBA, and that is a big contingency, but I think they wouldn't have announced this if it weren't for, for the long. But when you wake up this morning, um, was it worth it? Oh, it was definitely worth the fight. Uh, it was a long, long fight, six years, I believe. Um, you know, those of us uh, from the 2015 World Cup team that sought after the equal pay, um, we went on this journey, not, you know, really knowing what was going to happen, how long it was going to take, but we knew it was uh, going to be definitely a long haul. And um, yeah, there, there's a... Um, uh, I guess a sign of relief. I mean, no one wants to be fighting with their employer. Uh, it's been a, a bit of a, you know, rocky tension filled six years on many fronts. Um, but, you know, these inequities have been going on for, for a long, long time. And uh, I think we, we finally just uh, realized that uh, we weren't getting the, the treatment that we deserved. And so, while it's, uh, you know, a win in the books, like you said, it is still contingent upon a CBA. And we all know that CBAs can take a long, long time. And uh, I have not been in those meetings. I hope they're going well. And I hope they're, they're close to, uh, you know, signing off on that as well. So uh, I still think there's a long way to go. Um, you know, I'm newly retired. And I can tell you that I've, I've left the sport. Um, but I can't sit at my, my house on my couch and, and just do nothing. So, um, I know the NFL, I know other professional teams, major league baseball, NBA. I mean, they have these pensions that, uh, players are, are able to receive once they turn a certain age. So we're, we're still a ways away from that. Um, but it, it is, uh, definitely a relief for sure. Uh, Carly, while most everyone is celebrating this agreement, uh, Hope Solo, your former teammate, uh, came out with some strong comments. She called it an infuriating failure. She's really hung up on the fact that it is contingent on negotiating a collective bargaining agreement. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, I've known Hope a uh, really long time. Uh, she's a dear friend to me uh, still. You know, uh, she's been sort of my uh, just my, my partner along this journey, it's been a, been a really hard journey. And I know her journey has been one that's been outspoken. Um, but hope speaks the truth and hope has been, uh, at the forefront, you know, leading this charge. And many people don't realize that, um, because of her firing, but she was the one who really rallied everybody together in, in 2015 and 2016. And, brought in some people who could uh, shake things up with, uh, you know, the, the EEOC complaint. And, um, you know, she, she is uh, someone who um, just never gives up, you know, she, she fights for what she believes in. And, um, you know, I, I guess for, for me, I, I understand where she's coming from. 
um, because, you know, we, we obviously were fighting for a lot more um, and, and we settled on this. And, um, you know, I, I think what hope does is, you know, hope, hope fights for what she believes in. She always has, and she always will. Uh, last question with with regarding uh, th- this situation. You are, as you mentioned, retired. You are one of the elder states women uh, out there when it comes to this team, and you're seeing this new generation come through. And there's three kind of components of this, the way that I see it. Uh, one, the settlement. We just talked about the actual money that is being paid, and now this this goes away to a certain extent. Then there's the women's CBA that we talked about. There's also the men's CBA and the connection between those two. Uh, and then there's the equal... Um, the equal prize money and all of that kind of has to get sorted out and dealt with. And as I said before, I think that they would not have come out with uh, as publicly uh, with this had they not felt like these were things that could get done. Let's say that it does get done. Uh, This next generation of women and they're coming through that have kind of been and spend, uh, you know, spanned these two, these two uh, generations Uh, because for the, for the Federation, they would look at this, I would think and say, you know, this gets us a much better relationship in terms of our sponsors going forward. Uh, so there's more there's more money to be made. The court of public opinion, which you, Carly, and, and the, uh, the women, I think, just completely owned throughout this uh, whole process and really leveraged that in a really smart, uh, smart way. Um, is it is it kumbaya, do you think, going forward with this next generation of women? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's it's definitely probably going to be easier for them. Um, like I said, it was six years of tension filled, uh, you know, awkwardness at sometimes, um, you know, on, on both sides. And uh, I think, you know, it was, it was challenging at times to play and, and know that, uh, there's many of us who are having to take calls, uh, late at night and look over emails and, um, you know, kind of figure all that out, but now moving forward, um, you know, the players can play. I mean, you know, hopefully all this gets worked out, uh, the collective bargaining agreements and, and then all they can do is, is just focus on playing because that's, that's ultimately what matters, but there's, there's a great deal of pressure on them in my opinion, because while we took this long road to fight, you have to win games. You have to win World Cups. You have to win Olympics, because if you don't, then everything we've been fighting for um, is for nothing. So in my opinion, there's probably more pressure now to get the job done than there ever has been. And that's what's made this team so successful over the years is we won. You know, we we would we would go out there and we'd be be successful. Sometimes it wasn't the prettiest, but we find a way to win. And um, that is, that is going to be on the shoulders of all these players moving forward now. And Carly transitioning to the field, uh, U S women are undergoing quite the uh, rejuvenation here. Uh, If you look at this uh, latest, she believes cup roster, no Megan Rapinoe, no Alex Morgan, no Kristen press, no Tobin Heath, uh, no Julie Ertz. Uh, we're 18 months out from uh, the next World Cup. You played in the last World Cup at an advanced age and helped the U.S. women lift the trophy again. Uh, do you expect to see any of those players I just mentioned back in the mix, or you think the U.S. might be moving on here? What's your sense? Um, you know, I like what I'm seeing with uh, with Lacko and the team. I watched all the She Believes Cup um, games, and I must say that there's a there's a hunger there's a, there's a fight and there's just a, a different feel from, from the group, you know, they're out there trying to prove themselves and they got the opportunity to do it. And, uh, you know, while people were knocking the, the opponents during the, she believes cup, you know, I was pretty impressed with some of those teams, uh, especially Iceland, you know, I've played against Iceland for numerous amount of years and it's been always a, a WWE match. Um, but they came and they played and, and even Czech um, and, and New Zealand grew in the tournament. So I think that, you know, what Vlaco is doing is he's trying to get a lot of the young players ready and they need the experience. Um, and those teams that they faced, I think, were, were probably the right teams to face in that particular moment. Because if you threw them to the Wolves against top five teams, um, who knows what would have happened. I mean, I have, you know, full confidence in the team, but you want them to gain some, gain some confidence. um, And they have that they grew, you know, with, with the tournament. Um, Some players, you know, took 
on a, a bigger leadership role on the field and, and got things done. I mean, Katarina, you know, you kind of saw her grow throughout the tournament. Um, Ashley Sanchez, you know, Alana Cook, Foxy, um, you know, there's some players that really grew. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, what I've done throughout my career is I've just given every coach uh, a tough decision to make because I just came and I performed. And uh, I, I know that experience matters. I know that veteran leadership matters. Um, but what we had in the last several years was not a good culture and uh, the mentality changed and it became toxic and it wasn't good. So what do you do? You know, you, you got to shake things up. You got to change things up. And like everybody, I'm going to be really interested to see uh, how this is going to all unfold and what the roster is going to be going in the, you know, the qualifying and what the roster will be. Uh, hopefully they qualify and get to Australia. Can you put your finger on what made it toxic? A lot of different things. You know, I think, um, what made this team so successful throughout the years is we stepped in between the lines and we fought for one another, whether that was a player in front of you, the side of you behind you. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter what you looked like. It didn't matter what you stood for. It didn't matter uh, what car you drove. And in 2015, winning a world cup obviously put us on a really big, big stage and endorsements started coming and, the spotlight started to coming and I just saw a shift in, in people's mindsets. Um, it became more about what can I do to build my brand off the field? What can I do to, um, get a, an endorsement deal and less about what we have to do when we step in between those lines. Um, you can't become complacent. I mean, this game is evolving so fast on the woman's side. And you can't become complacent at all. So I don't think it was one particular thing. I think it was a number of things, but I don't think the respect of wearing the crest and playing for your country and doing everything in your power to fight for your teammates on the field was there. And, and you saw that you saw a, a team like Canada win a gold medal. Um, not, not the most talented team, you know, on paper, we had the most talented team, but talent doesn't win you everything. You've got to be a team and you've got to collectively uh, be on the same page. Uh, when last we spoke here on the State of the Union, you had just recently retired. You've had some time now and you talked about things both professional and private that uh, and personal that you wanted to do um, and now had the time to do it. How far along are you on the, uh, those goals and how is it? Do you uh, do you miss it or are you still content and happy with your decision? You know, I'm not sure how you felt when you retired, but um, I feel really good. And I'm not just saying that I, I feel really at peace, content. Um, I don't miss it. You know, I haven't kicked a ball since really my last game. Um, I'm, I'm working out, you know, but I'm working out for different purposes now. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a weird phase that I'm in, but uh, I can honestly say I just... I gave it everything I had for, for those 17 years. And, and I knew that that was when I wanted to walk away and step away from the game. So it was almost as if, you know, my tank was just done at that point. And um, yeah, I, I love just being able to, to wake up whenever I want to have time with my husband, with my family, my friends, my nieces, um, got a lot of trips planned uh, you know, continuing to do my, my CL 10 clinics uh, around the country and, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been really, really good. And Carly, are you following Rutgers sports? And what kind of guy was Alexi Lalas back <laughs> in his college days? <laughs> well, I know Alexi had some some wild hair back then. Lots of um, hair. But yeah, Lots Rutgers, of, we're, of, of course, Rutgers starts to do well when we're when we've been really right? out of the thick of things. Right. <laughs> it's I'm... been exciting to watch watch some of the, the sports do well. All right, a couple things before we let you go here. Uh, one, I know you're a big fan of uh, the U.S. in, in men's, women's, co-ed, naked, doesn't matter, as long as we're kicking a ball. A and the U.S. men's national team finds itself uh, on the eve of a very, very big window here that could see us qualify for a World Cup and return to the World Cup. Do you think that Greg Berhalter and company uh, get it done here in this window? And then if they do, how do you think they're going to do in uh, Qatar? 
Well, I've been watching, I've been following, I've been supporting, um, have to say, you know, a big fan of Brendan Aronson. Um, we live in the same town and got to meet him, uh, recently. So, uh, really pulling for him and, and the team, but this is, this is huge. Um, if there's ever been more of a pressure filled window of games, this is it. And, uh, obviously, uh, it's a, it's a big bummer with Weston McKinney out. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, Christian, you know, really uh, starting to find his form. And, um, you know, I, I think that it's hard, you know, he, he comes in and, and has the weight of the world on his shoulders and he's just got to play, you know, he's got to play for, for himself, for his teammates and uh, not take the, the burden of that much pressure. And, you know, I, I think they're going to get it done. I really do. I believe, um, but they're going to have to give it everything they've got, you know, and, and ride the wave of, of kind of the uncertainty of how games are going to flow. Uh, but this is, this is massive. And finally, uh, while we didn't cross paths in terms of uh, Rutgers as students way back in the, in the day, we find ourselves here in 2022 uh, uh, classmates. Uh, for those that don't know, Carly and I are both in a uh, year-long program uh, from FIFA. It's basically a, a business type of master's type of plan. Like I said, it uh, started in January and is going to go all the way through to December in, uh, in the World Cup. We get up very early on these Zoom calls. We have some trips planned uh, to Zurich, uh, and then it all culminates in the graduation in, um, in Qatar. Uh, how is it going, uh, my classmate? <laughs> I don't think I knew what I was getting myself into. At right? least I'm on the East Coast. It's not uh, what you're. You're LA, so you're up at 5 a.m. bright and early for those things. Brutal, huh? brutal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it's it's been good, and it's a bummer we can't do all of these more in person. Um, but it's it's been really interesting. It's been great insight to just you know get from from other people because everybody's on all different, you know, wavelengths, you know, I'm newly retired. You've got yourself, you've got Heather O'Reilly, who's been out of the game a little bit. And then you've got some other players that are, you know, have businesses already of their own, but it's, uh, I've been really enjoying it. Um, I'm really bummed. I'm going to miss the, uh, June, uh, you know, meeting that, that's taking place in Zurich. I'm going to be on my summer RV road trip. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been good. Have you been enjoying it? I have. Uh, it's been very interesting. Like you said, the, the collection of it's about 35 players. Uh, and this is the inaugural year of this uh, this program. So there are there are kind of, it's kind of a work in progress and trying to figure it out. But it's been wonderful. We've had some good speakers um, and the interaction between people uh, and, and a lot, like you said, that have kind of just come to retirement phase and kind of thinking about the future. And then that middle part that are already kind of well on their way. And then some older folks like myself uh, who, who maybe have a, a little bit of wisdom, but you know, ultimately it's about, it's about making connections. It's also about learning. And I, I love that, that you, and you mentioned Heather and so many other people recognize that if you can get something out of this in terms of that interaction, it's going to help you regardless of, uh, of what you're doing. Uh, Carly Lloyd, thank you so much. Again, you are, you are always such a, an interesting interviewee. Uh, and, and the things that you say and the way that you look at soccer, both on and off the field. Also, I think at a time where there is needed perspective in, in not just soccer, but in life, I think that you have a, a wonderful, healthy dose of that. Something that, like I said, is is very, very needed. I wish you luck uh, as you continue to go on. Uh, I know I'll see you in class, but also as you continue on through the uh, through the year, your RV trips and all the other stuff uh, that you are working uh, on. And I hope that whether it's Brendan Aronson or anybody else out there, that uh, we are all celebrating a, another trip to a World Cup when it comes to the U.S. Uh, national team. Thank you, Carly. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks uh, to Carly Lloyd. Uh, and thank you for tuning into this special edition of the State of the Union podcast. A nice interview with, uh, as I said, a... Uh, a great person and certainly a uh, a great player. And I love to listen to the things that she has to say about soccer, uh, whether it's on or, uh, or on the field. So uh, we will be back to regular schedule, uh, scheduling programming uh, on uh, next week, next Monday. When do we do it again, Mossy? Next Monday. All right, next Monday. All right, thanks for tuning in. And as always, size the day. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.